Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School. And Faye with Live Talk with Faye. And we're glad you've joined us today. And we're going to uh, be watching for more of you to jump in here and uh, see what's going on with World Bible School. We are doing this show just as uh, kind of a point of keeping you up to date. And um, uh, there's Lana Coverdale uh, jumping in here. Uh, we're just do we do this show to kind of keep you up to date and kind of share some things with you that are coming in the future with World Bible School University. And uh, so they, uh, it, it's a uh, it's a great thing to have a vision. Uh, sometimes it's a race of patience uh, before you actually see the vision manifest. But uh, here we are in one of those situations. Yes. We are excited about it getting started. We have the accreditation for it. We have um, lessons we've gotten. Um, we've joined up with a college that we will be getting our uh, curriculum through. And uh, we hope to even write some of our own curriculum in the in the near future. But uh, all we need is a building. And I am yeah. so excited to get started. There's been people that um, would love to teach um and and you know whole classes different things but we need a building so that's where we're at yes and uh, you know while we're in our early stages possibly even in our first year phase we have uh three instructors that are are qualified instructors and um uh and all qualified with uh, the Bible Institutes of America incorporated and yeah. so uh you know there's a lot of things we've had a small christian college in the past in one of our churches but when you're thinking about the thing we're thinking about, and that's a university, uh, you're talking about something humongous. And, you know, it's only because we love to uh, serve the Lord and 45 years of marriage, 45 years of ministry. And we just have a few things I think that the Lord wants us to say and to encourage the body of Christ in. Well, I think the difference, uh, Dr. Bill, in a college and a university is um, a college is a one entity and a university uh, can expand to different campuses, different places. And we are hoping that ours will expand. I mean, uh, World Bible School, it says it itself. World Bible School University says it itself. And that is yeah. that we want people to come from all over the world. We want some place where we have um, student housing so that they can stay here. And right. that doesn't just mean other countries. That means from across the United States, wherever they're coming from, when they come here, they'll need a place to stay. So we're hoping to have student housing. We're hoping to have uh, the, the campus itself. And, you know, we went to Oral Roberts University one time and walked the campus there. And I mean, it's been, like you said, probably close to 30 years that we um, have had this in our heart. God birthed it in us and we're just now starting to see it come to pass. And um, Dr. J, Dr. Jimmy Lewis and Miss Sarah are also on board with this and he will be one of the instructors. And if you saw Live Talk with Faye this morning, that was Dr. J on there with me and we were talking about Jesus and it was so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, uh, I, I realized that way back when I have a picture on my wall, not that we are the same type of university as Oral Roberts University, but just as a comparison, I have a picture on my wall of their entire layout, parking lots, student housing, dormitories, uh, the whole nine. They're the Maybe Center where they had basketball games, uh, the hospital across the street, and way over the corner, this little bitty building with a pretty good sized parking lot, which was the Oral Roberts uh, Evangelistic Association building where they first, you know, literally went through mail and handed out, but they didn't do emails back then. And, you know, so I'm sure they didn't start with this, this same size of university when they started, probably had one building, started uh, doing some things to encourage people and instruct people, and it just grew from there. And it takes a lot of money to operate, so we want to wisely take it one step at a time as we can, but we just know this is the vision that's in our hearts. Amen. Okay, 
So we've been looking every week. We look at a brand new scripture on education. I honestly didn't number them as far as how many I actually have accumulated. But I have a ton of scriptures that have to do with education. And here's another one in Isaiah 54, verse 13. And it says, all your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. So, Faye, again, um, uh, what uh, w- w- would you read these in the, the message, the Amplified Classic, and the uh, Eastern Standard Version, please? Sure. The message says, all your children will have God for their teacher. What a mentor for your children. Wow, what a verse. Mm-hmm. And in the Amplified Classic, and all your spiritual children shall be disciples taught by the Lord and obedient to his will. And great shall be the peace and undisturbed composure of your children. And then in the Eastern Standard Version, all your children shall be taught by the Lord and shall be the peace of your children. And great shall be the peace of your children. Dr. Bill, that Amplified Classic really says it's something good in there. And all your spiritual children shall be disciples taught by the Lord and obedient to his will. And, you know, we see, you and I both see uh, people that we try to, even in other countries, try to give a word of encouragement Mm -hmm. to, and they just don't want to receive it. Well, to be a good disciple, they're going to have to receive that word. Well, what you have to do is you have to think about who your spiritual parents are. Do you have a spiritual connection? Do you have a spiritual connection as brothers and sisters? Do you recognize that connection? Do you have do you recognize the connection of of, uh, you, you know, that you're connected to someone? We've had spiritual parents in our life. Uh, I had a mentor, Dr. Elmer Easter, who has has gone on now and his college has really is just really kind of on hold, almost non-existent. And and uh, he was a great influence in my life. And we've had other instructors and other parents and we have heeded to them. Now, Faye, we have two natural children. And if we were to take these scriptures literal and all your children will have God as their teacher, that'd be a wonderful thing to think about. But you're right. The Amplified Classic really brings it out. All your spiritual children shall be disciples uh, taught by the Lord and obedient to his will. You know, Dr. Bill, there's not very many colleges or universities these days where the head of the university, and that was um, Dr. Easter, where you Mm -hmm. went, that Mm -hmm. personally takes an interest in a student and works with them like he did with you. I mean, he not only taught you, you not only had a book study, but you also had where he took you out and and gave you projects to do and you had to literally carry those projects out yes even pastoring um you know uh which gave me experience and i'm thankful for to dr easter for that but you know Faye, here's something that's consistent in these verses uh and that is that god will be your teacher now we we need to explain this before we get into our lesson today because god intended Uh, to be a teacher to all. But do we all, like in the days of Jesus, do we all sit on a hillside by by massive multitudes and then we sit there and Jesus instructs us? That doesn't happen. So how does God teach us? Well, he does it through his instructors. He uses instructors. That's right. He uses ministers. And so when people say, you know, scriptures, for example, like uh, in uh, Second um, uh, John that says, uh, I have no need that anyone teach you. Uh, the Holy Spirit will be a teacher or something to that effect. The reality is, is that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. But let's okay. not forget that God teaches us through uh, these instructors, men and women. Amen. He certainly does. Yeah, um, so we need to keep well, that in and, mind. And as the instructors study the word, and they are good Bereans, they don't just take what they've heard. They don't just take a scripture and go off on it without studying. Then God speaks to them and gives them revelation about what they're studying, yeah. and then they're able to pass it on. So now that we're t- changing our focus from a church building uh, with a college in it to a university with a 
church or a, a house of worship in it, uh, our focus is totally reversed, totally uh, uh, enlarged, uh, even though we haven't seen that manifest yet. Here's the thing. God still speaks through instructors today who will teach us the depths of his word. We need those instructors. And so it's not just sitting around and waiting on God like back in the, the uh, 80s and the 70s when we had this uh, and even late 70s when the, the charismatic movement was really uh, expanding. And I've been to some of those meetings where before we got married, where we all would go into some place like even out in the country and barns or wherever and a bunch of folding chairs in a round circle. We just sat there and waited for God to say something. I'm not saying that's completely wrong, but I'm saying God has a word in me as an instructor, as he does in you, as he does in Dr. J and other people that we know and we're connected with. Yes. Yes, and there's a lot of good instructors out there, but there are also some out there that you want to be careful of. Like Dr. J said on this this morning, he said, if you go into a church and the pastor is preaching nothing but condemnation, that's right. You turn around and run the fa as fast as you can, because Jesus said in in uh, John three seventeen that he didn't come to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. And That's so right. if if a preacher is condemning you because you may not be doing things the way he likes it, or because you may not be um, as up on the word. Maybe you've only been a Christian for a very short time and you don't understand everything yet. You know, and they condemn you because you do this, which sure. is wrong in their eyes. Then you need to run from that place because Jesus does not condemn and he doesn't give any person a right to condemn. Now, Faye, as a minister of the kingdom, and I say ministers, I should say, uh, in our group, we teach things that are not only just cutting edge, but can appear to be out there a little bit because they oppose religion. They oppose modern traditional Christianity. We're not against Christians. We're not against traditions to a certain right. extent, but uh, without getting into any of these things, because then we go off on some long uh, uh, thing because we have a lesson today. But the tr truth is every time someone has challenged me with what I teach, I've been able to give uh, an answer to that. Now, when I teach the book of Revelation in my Take Another Look broadcast series, I'm on lesson number 68 on Wednesday. I've always been able to to give uh, uh, in my instruction how I derive at what it is I'm teaching. And most of the time people don't question that. And Dr. Bill, without going off onto anything, this study, I mean, this is like your third time of going through it. Uh, second time or third time. I don't know. But anyway, it's it's like, you know, things are really opening up. And when somebody reads something for the first time, if they don't really study it and look at it over and over, sometimes they can miss it. Sometimes it doesn't drop in their heart like it should. And so they'll just pass it on by and say it wasn't true. But, you know, if people will really study and look at the word of God, you know, the book of Revelation has just opened up to be something that is. Um, it's opened up so many avenues of truth. Well, it's opened up so many avenues of truth, but it's opened up life. You know, instead Absolutely. of looking for an end, now we're looking for this is just a beginning. Life without end. Life without end. Right. Now, now Faye, you know, uh, the thing is that. Uh, how I got started was over the course of 45 years of ministry, I've dabbled in the book of Revelation, a scripture here, a scripture there. I've read it many times. I've taught out of it multiple times, but I really never had a targeted focus on the book of Revelation. And it was a little over two years ago that the Holy Spirit led me specifically to study the book of Revelation verse by verse and to teach it as I study it. And I started doing that. Right now, we are in chapter 13. This Wednesday will be lesson 101. And, the evening, uh, evening class. You have two on Wednesday. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, Pastor Bill, our friend, wants to know what the difference in condemnation and conviction is. 
And the best answer I can give is uh, that conviction uh, in the Bible when it says that the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. That world in the Greek is translated uh, convinces. He come to convince the world, not that they were sinners, but that there was something better. And the reality is, is there is so much when we talk about the word con, con, uh, uh, convince, uh, condemnation is and I know this this is I, I don't want to get too far out here, Faye, because we do have a lesson today. Not that we can't come back to these lessons any time. Okay. But my point is, is that when we talk about conviction, we have to consider the source. Now, everybody wants to talk about a devil when we talk about conviction. But what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, it says that serpent of old called the devil and Satan. That word called there is a really neat Greek word that really says the words devil and Satan are mythological names. They're nicknames. They're untrue names. So we've called uh, in our English translation of the Bible, they've translated those words to be devil and Satan. And so when we talk about condemnation, we have to understand the source of condemnation. The source of condemnation, this is the way I say it. The enemy, a.k.a. the accuser, a.k.a. the law. The law come to convict. Right. The Bible right. says in 1 Corinthians, the 2 Corinthians 3, that it is the ministry, that which was written on tablets of stone, is the ministry of condemnation and the ministry of death. Of death. But, but conviction, again, is that Greek word that means to convince. One of the things, there's three things, and I don't want to teach those today, but there's three things the Bible said that, that uh, the Holy Spirit came to do to convince. And one of those was to convince us of righteousness. Do you know the one thing the Holy Spirit will do when we talk about co uh, being convicted, God convicting us of sin? What really we're, we're misunderstanding is, is he's convincing us that we are righteous. And you'll go to God and say, but God, I messed up. I sinned. And you know what his message will be? You're righteous. The Lord wants you to see that God has sovereignly, at an act of his own grace and his own heart, his own love, has made you the righteousness of God. Well, and convic conviction conviction, is always done with love. You know, if, if for, for instance, when ministers hear another minister teaching something that's not biblical, and they feel like God wants them to talk to them, they're never going to go to them and condemn them for how they have preached it. They're never going to tell them how wrong they are. They're going to tell them they're going to they're going to convince them of the word of God and tell them truth. So conviction is truth or talking about righteousness. And, you know, I was thinking about if we. Um, trying to think of a good example, but if, if we talk to somebody about something that is good, um, for instance, somebody goes on a, a new job and they get connected with someone that really loves that job and they're telling them all the good things about it, then that person's not going to be thinking all the bad things about that job. They're going to think the good things. And the same way is with conviction and condemnation. If we talk all the good things about Jesus and, and how we are the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ and how Father God loves us unconditionally, like um, Pastor Bill is always saying that, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. which is truth. Uh, and we don't condemn them for maybe making a mistake or maybe doing something the way we don't think that it should be done, then, you know, that's the difference in conviction and condemnation. Condemnation is constantly putting someone down, even if you're trying to do it in a way, in a good way. It, there's no good way. There's no good way for condemnation. It makes people feel bad. It makes them feel less than what you know, they may be doing or whatever, but conviction will uplift them. And, and I think conviction basically comes from Holy Spirit. It doesn't really come from man like it does from it Holy does. Spirit. Yeah. And so when Holy Spirit convicts us, he'll just kind of nudge us and he'll say, Hey, you know, what about love in this situation? What would love say? Or, yes. He's you know, always trying to like convince that. us of the better. Right. Exactly. Now, Bay, you and I came out of a denomination as as kids and as young people where trying to convince people 
or convict people of their sin was an ongoing process. I never remember anybody ever trying to convince you that you were righteous. That was never the way things were done. But, you know, when we talk about what we talked about last week and what we said we were going to finish today is is uh, the subject of love. We have to understand uh, uh, what we talked about last week was how that our love falls short. Uh, we fall short because we usually operate out of emotional love. But we're not talking about our love. We're talking about God's love in us. And let's not mistake that, you know, it is our love, but it's not our love. It's his love working in us. But, you know, Faye, uh, and I can't get into this today, but there is a process that's going on where we're being tra- our soulish thinking uh, in the unrenewed part of our soul is being transformed into the full uh, manifestation of the mind of Christ. And when that happens, there will no longer be a separation of his love versus my love. It'll all be his love. It'll be one love. But for now, you know, Faye, we talked about something last week that was so powerful, and that is uh, people I disagree with. Can I still love them? Homosexuals, um, um, the, the, the person in the White House that I do not care about or uh, now you're not person. talking about President Trump. Let's just get that clear. Take it easy, Faye. Take it easy. <laughs> Don't get all riled up. Don't get on he's, your political he's soapbox. He's our man. <laughs> Don't get on your political soapbox. Uh, but, you know, Faye, one of the hardest things for us to do is to say, you know what? I can't stand that person. And then to stop a moment and say, but the love of God in me is constraining me from expressing my dislike of that person. God does not disapprove anyone. I'm not saying God loves sin. We need to learn to separate sin. That was, remember what the Lord said? He said, your sins and transgressions, I remember no more. Isn't it amazing how much God is forgetting that in Christ, sin was sacrificed and paid for, and yet he doesn't remember sins anymore, but we're still remembering sins. Look, give God an, a chance here to work in his creation. They're not my creation, and even though I don't like some things about his creation, they're not my created beings, they're his. Give him a chance to work in humanity. You know, it reminds me of what Dr. John Roberts said on his show, and that is his son is into music and he was going to be playing at this bar. Yeah, and he grill plays drums and whatever. in a rock band. Yeah. And he invited his dad. He said, I know you won't come, but you can get online and watch me. Would you please do that? Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like for you to come, but I know you disagree with what I'm doing and blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, it's kind of like Jesus going to Nicodemus's house. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus wasn't a Christian. And a lot of people would say, you shouldn't. You mean Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, I'm sorry. Say you shouldn't, you shouldn't associate with him because he's not part of our church or he's not. He's not right. Well, you know, John went ahead and he went and he watched his son. And you know what? That brought more love and more um, closeness between him and his son than he could have ever thought of anything else. And Jesus used that, you know, and sometimes we might say, well, I don't want nobody to see me there. I don't want to do this. What difference does it make what people say? People's going to say anything if you're doing things right or wrong. You know, so you got to listen to Holy Spirit. And if he tells you you need to go because this is going to help something in, in that person, then we should right. listen to it. Now, Faye, one of the things we're trying to do is to share some of the things that will be taught at World Bible School University. Now, we have to understand that maybe someone out there wants to hear some of the depths of the kingdom of God or some of the deep spiritual truths. And I I respect that. But we are also going to teach some of the basic things because even some of the basic things have been taught uh, to a degree with some imbalance in them. And uh, here we have a question about, can you please explain uh, about love, hope, and faith according to your point of view. And I think at the end of this chapter, we're about to talk about uh, one of the latter parts of this chapter says uh, that there is faith, hope, and love or charity, and the greatest of these is love. And I think maybe next time we ought to go ahead and address that, uh, wouldn't you think? Because we can in, in part talk about that today in terms of, of love. Right. And and so we've been talking about love and, and Faye brought up some interesting points last night or last time. 
And uh, we started to read from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8 in the God's Word translation. And I had mentioned, and and I, I will, uh, sin, sinpa, I believe, I will, uh, we will talk about that. Uh, just give us a little time to prepare ourselves. It's not a tough one. I just believe it a little bit differently, but it's not a tough one to explain. Um, but um, uh, but but let us uh, address that next time. Uh, but but I was in a church preaching. Faye, you were there in, in um, um, oh, Clayton, Georgia. And on their back wall, I mentioned last week, there was this this all over the wall. Uh, it says love is and it went through this whole process of love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous and so on. And I got up to minister and I turned around. And I said, that's not talking about our love. Because that's what people think. If my love isn't patient, then I get condemned for it. If my love isn't kind, then I get condemned for it. This is talking about God's love. And God has a patient work of love in me and a patient work of kindness in me. And his His love uh, isn't jealous in me. But let's let's read this. Uh, unless you have a comment, please go ahead and then read this from the God's Word. No, my comment is afterwards. So we'll get back okay. to that. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Love is patient. Love is kind. Love isn't jealous. It doesn't sing its own praises. It mm -hmm. isn't arrogant. It isn't rude. It doesn't think about itself. It isn't irritable. It doesn't keep track of wrongs. It isn't happy when injustice is done, but it is happy with the truth. Love never stops being patient, never stops believing, never stops hoping, and never gives up. Love never comes to an end. There is the gift of speaking what God has revealed, but it will no longer be used. There is the gift of speaking in other languages, but it mm -hmm. will stop by itself. There is the gift of knowledge, but it will need, it will no longer be used. Now, Faye, uh, you said you had a comment. I'd like to just throw something in here. You know, you made me and I want all of our listeners to to understand how we are so hungry and we pursue truth to what degree. You know, we we uh, have for many years pushed the Ten Commandments, uh, but there came this this transition several years back uh, from uh, stop preaching law and start preaching grace. And and we started seeing where they were tearing down the Ten Commandments in courthouses and schools. And and I just said, you know what, I'd rather see them put up the uh, John 316 as opposed to the Ten Commandments in our courthouses. And and so we started really pushing this where Jesus said two new commandments I give you. Uh, uh, one that you love God with all your heart, my soul and strength and the others like it. Uh, uh, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. That's the right. pivotal point. Right. But you discovered, Faye, that later on, which was at the uh, last, what was called the Last Supper, which was Passover, 50 days prior to Pentecost, you discovered that Jesus said, I've given you another commandment. And Faye, what was that other commandment that Jesus gave? that we love one another. And I and I I would love to take credit for finding that, but I believe I heard that on one of Brother Simon uh Simon Yap's uh tapes. Well, notice that it says uh from John 13:34, a new commandment I give you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. And now, that says Jesus, it's a new commandment. And Jesus didn't say dismiss everything else. He, what he's trying to tell us how to do, how to walk in everything else is do this one thing, love one another. Can you imagine what our world would be like today if everybody just showed love one to another and didn't show hate, didn't think about their self? Joyce Myers got a teaching out from years and years ago. It says, what about me? What about me? What about me? What about me? A lot of people only think about <laughs> themselves. That's really the Eros type of love. You know, what can right. I get for myself? And then there's the um, there's the phileo love. Well, I care about me and I care about you, but it's still just a person love. It's it's it's, you know, I want to get love from you, but I want to give you love too. the Eros only takes what it can what it can give. That's the difference in the Eros and the, the phileo love. Um, why don't you explain what the stored gay love is? Well, Faye, I would love to, but I didn't, uh, I don't think I put that in my notes, did I? 
Oh, I don't know. I, I can't know everything on the spot at all times. <laughs> I well, like I to think I was two, that smart. I got the two down, and I thought you were going to talk about that one. But but what we're talking today m mainly about is um, the agape type of love, and that's God's love. That's the God type type of love. And I noticed that that you said that we can, you know, that even human love does many times get irritable. Father God doesn't, you know, he doesn't get irritated with us. He doesn't, um, he doesn't see the wrong in us. He just loves us, period. Even if we make a mistake or even if we, you know, don't, he loves us. Well, Faye, to answer your question, you know, you mentioned uh, eros, which is um, uh, emotional love. Uh, storge uh, comes from another Greek word, but it really is talking about the love we have for a friend or for okay, a friend. natural love for a family member. Yes. Um, but Faye, you're right. Now, here, here that you read in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, this is not talking about our love or our ability to love. And right. one of the things we made a mistake in is thinking that if I would just love better, then my love would be perfected. Uh, we used 1 John 4, 8 last week. We talked about how, or 4, 7, uh, 4, I can't remember exactly, but uh, we talked about how that, uh, that perfected love is the Lord's love working in us. So this is, is describing what God's love is for us and in us. And, uh, no one can properly love others without a revelation of the Father's love. But when they have that revelation, then they can show that agape type love one to another. And I think that, you know, just as, as years ago, um, you was you was upset because you found out that some of the teachings you had had were not wrong. And you said, God. Why didn't my pastor teach me the truth at that time? And you said, God told you, you had a book, didn't you? Well, sure. people, people have a book today and they know how to understand and to look up. I mean, my goodness, if they've got a computer, they can look up anything they want, food, anything, you know, and they can understand what the agape type of love is and they can understand, you know, um, what I put on here, I put, I think we need to understand not just that the agape love of God is living in us, which it is because Jesus lives in us, but also the agape love of God that knew us before we were born. He already had a plan for our life. He already loved us then. And then he gave us his only son. That was the agape type of love. And then who looks at us as righteousness, doesn't look at us with condemning, uh, condemning heart or anything, but he mm -hmm. looks at, at us as the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. Um, and we talked about that this morning uh, on Live Talk with Faye, and we found out that he did everything for us. We no longer have to wait for healing, salvation, or prosperity. It was given to us at the cross. That's the agape type of love. It was all done for us. And that's the thing about agape is it's unconditional love. And that's why we can only tag agape to the Lord, even though his love is working in us. Because we, I'm, I'm sorry, I've had ministers and other Christians who have complained, uh, uh, claimed rather, that they walk in the agape love of God. But if you're going to say that, then you also have to say, I walk in the unconditional love of God. And I'll be honest, I haven't always walked in unconditional love. In other words, my love has had conditions. If you act this way, then I'll accept you. But if you don't act this way, then I won't accept you. And that comes with people's lifestyles. That comes with how the waitress serves us at the restaurant. That comes with how the, the clerk at the market treats us. And we have conditions. And if they slam into our car with the basket or they don't load our groceries correctly or the salesperson where you buy clothing at, we have conditional love even though we're getting that worked out in us. Dr. Bill, how easy is it for someone that goes into a restaurant to blame the waitress for how their food is cooked? Yeah. Now, the waitress doesn't cook your food. You know, if it's wrong, you can tell her and she'll be happy to take it back and have them do it over again. But so many times people get upset just because the waitress brought the food to you. She didn't cook it. They get upset. 
Dr. Bill, you need to F5 real quick. And while you are, I'm going to go over again those three types of love and um, for SINPAP because they say it's not easy to follow biblical teaching. Biblical teaching goes and it tells you about three types of love. The Eros type of love is what I can get for myself. If you're involved with someone else, all you care about is what that other person can do to make you happy. It doesn't matter what I do for them. I don't care about taking care of them or doing anything for them. The Eros type love just says, what can I get for myself? And then there's also the Phileo type love. Now the Phileo type love is also between two people. It doesn't have to be a husband and wife. It can be two friends or whatever, but what I can do for you and what you can do for me. It's like a take and give type type love. And then the, um, the other one, um, I forgot how you say that. Um, Phileo. Sir, now the, the, I just said Phileo, the, the third kind. Storge. Storge. Yeah. That kind of love is like a friendship between friends is, is what you said. And, you know, I have, I have thousands of friends on Facebook that I've never met. One of them is a dear, dear friend. I, I saw him. He was Hindu. And I have seen him come from Hindu, give his heart to the Lord, become a Christian, got baptized. Now he's married and he's taken his wife to church and he just he loves God. And, you know, I just I love him with all my heart. He's only he just turned, I think, 27 yesterday. So he's he's like um, younger than my my children and a little bit older than my grandchildren. But, you know, I love him. And that is the store gay kind of love. He's my friend, you know, and if he could do anything for me, there was a time in his life that it was not easy for him. And I stayed up and talked to him and prayed with him and and, right. and just gave him the best biblical advice I could. And because of that, he, he says he owes me his life. I said, no, you don't owe me your life. You owe it to Jesus. You know, Jesus is the one that sent me along that if I gave you any words that were okay, it was because of him and Holy Spirit. Yeah. So those are the three kinds of, of uh, love. And then the fourth kind of love is the agape. And that's what we're talking about today. The pure. Now, I all I can think of is agape love is just. Just the pure love, like you pour milk out of a jug. It's just the pure stuff coming right on out. It don't have any any anything in it, you know? <laughs> My wife can get excited about two things when it comes to drinks, milk and chocolate milk. Yeah, so, um, Pastor Bill, uh, Chris, you're uh, posted that Storge is family type of love. It's a uh, parent to child, phileo, brotherly love. And we know that from the... Uh, Greek word for the um, uh, the church at Philadelphia, yeah. brotherly, the city yeah. of brotherly love. But now, that's where they want to help each other back and forth. You want to give them love and, and they'll give you love back. That's how it was in that church. Now, you're the one that brought up the store gay love being friendship. I guess you can also call friendship family type because family are friends one with another. But yeah, family, mom and dad to parent. That would be the story, Gay. Thank yeah. you, Brother Bill, for sharing now, that. Now, we may want to go on to something else next week, and we're going to be mentioning a couple of things. So let's go ahead and, and address uh, Simpa's uh, question about faith, hope, and love. Uh, because just real briefly, if we're talking about love, and these, when it talks about faith, <laughs> hope, and love, again, it's talking about the God kind of faith, the God right. kind of hope, the God kind of love. And, and you know, Here's where people would disagree with me and we would have this debate, but there's more than one kind of faith. There is the faith. The Bible, one of the definitions for faith means uh, that which you are persuaded of. So we have a belief system in us and we are persuaded of one thing or the other. But oftentimes when the Bible talks about faith, according to Romans 12, verse three, we've received a portion of God's faith. So we have the faith of God. Paul said, I live by the faith of the son of God. 
when it comes to hope, the best definition for hope in the Strong's is uh, it's a, a confident expectation of good. So people say, well, can I be in hope or can I be in, in faith? What do I need? You, you can be in hope, but hope, again, is God pouring into you a confident expectation of a good outcome. There's too right. many people who get a bad outcome. But here again, when you mention the agape love, faith, the agape love of God, uh, it's unconditional love. And that's, that just gets us almost every time. I know people who seem to love unconditionally, but occasionally something will come up, that sudden emotional outburst about an issue or something. But I, I believe people do love. Well, you mentioned on here when I was going over your part of the notes that God's love is never happy about any injustice that happens to someone. You may feel like they had it coming, but agape love only rejoices whenever the truth prevails. So what you're saying in that is if there's a little part in you that feels like someone deserves the bad that is happening to them, then you're not really showing the agape type of love, are you? Well, Faith, the, the, the truth is uh, here again, it's just one of those things I believe that in our soul, we, we are first a spirit being made in the image and likeness of God, came out of God. I can prove that even before the foundations <laughs> of the world. God took us as spirit beings and injected us into human bodies. But in having a human body, we also have a human soul, which is the arena of our mind, will, intellect and emotions. Now, in that soul, we have part of it that's been renewed. It's renewed to truth that comes out of our spirit, man, or comes from God. But then we also have the unrenewed portion of our soul. And in that unrenewed portion, that carnal portion is where we sometimes struggle. I love, I, I mean, that's what happens in our soul. The renewed part versus the unrenewed part. I love, I hate. I love, I hate. I approve of this. I disapprove of that. We do it all the time. But I have confidence that we are ever being transformed into his image. But Dr. Bill, you and, and Dr. J always talk about this becoming the sons of God. We're here to help the, the hurting in the world. And, you know, as we see this manifesting more and more and more, people are going to have to quit using the excuse about the ones that have been in for a while, you know, going to have to quit using the excuse about, well, this part of my soul is not renewed and they're going to okay. just have to get it done. They're going to have to study that love like the good Bereans. You know, if people would say, if they would stop being a homosexual, I could love them. Wow. If they would stop being a murderer, I could love them. If they would stop being disrespectful to their parents, I could love them. How many conditions are we going to place on a creation that God loves unconditionally? What about if they would just stop being ISIS? And then bring it down even farther. If they would stop being a Muslim or if they would stop being a Hindu or if they would stop being a Catholic or if they'd stop being a Presbyterian or if they'd stop being a, yes. a Methodist or if they'd stop being a Baptist or if they'd stop being a Pentecostal. You can bring it all the way down to what about you in your own home? You know, so you you've got to start loving in your home, in your community, in your town, outside of your state, all, all these people, you've got to show love to them the way God showed love for them. Okay, Galatians 5, 6 says, but faith working through love. Now, the King James says, but faith worketh by love, or faith which worketh by love. That's kind of a, um, uh, uh, something that points to us saying, okay, you know, I really struggle loving this type of an individual. I mean, for example, Faye, uh, I teach a lot of uh, uh, stuff that's out there. So I do get comments sometimes of disapproval on our YouTube channels. And, you know, people don't like, OK, that's fine. Can I love them in spite of their opinion? I mean, the father's love does not demand its own way. Why should I demand my own way? Exactly. That's why it's real hard for me, Dr. Bill. Um, and, and I don't like to take arguments into Facebook publicly because it doesn't have a good representation. Although mm -hmm. I will give scriptural opinions and what the scripture says. But, you know, that's why um, that's why 
I don't like to block people because I always have hopes that one day I can say something that will joggle their mind and get them to study and get them to find out what the truth is. Sure. Sure. And we need to show kindness to other people. Now, um, I don't want to uh, go over something that you've already stated, Faye, uh, but, uh, but the father's love does not throw a fit and push to get its own way. What we've done is we've equated that to us saying, well, if I throw a fit and push to get my own way, then I'm not walking in the love of God. Well, that's that part. I, I, let me give you, here's a, the best example. Okay. Now, I have had pain in my body before. All right. But that's not me. You notice how we always say my body is hurting here. We unconsciously recognize that I have a body. My body hurts. What are we saying? My body hurts, but I don't. I mean, unconsciously, that's what we're saying. So as a spirit being, I have no pain. I have no discouragement. I never need prayer for my spirit man. There is no such thing as I, my spirit man is discouraged. Now, do we get discouraged spiritually or about things concerning our Christian walk? Well, of course, that happens. But as a spirit man, you can stab me. You can do all kinds of stuff. My spirit man will never retaliate because my spirit man is bathed in the father's love who lives in my spirit man. But okay. My body but, sometimes but has to be. But shouldn't our body line up with our spirit? When we become true sons of God, shouldn't our body line up with our spirit? Shouldn't we be able to, if we have, I heard someone say this the other day, I won't mention a name or anything, but they said, um, you know, they felt pains in their heart. And then they just said, they realized that's not from God. So that's not for me, period. And once yeah. they realized that the pain was gone. Shouldn't now, what that the be Bible, we Well, what the Bible actually says Faye, uh, in third John verse two, it says, beloved, I desire that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So the, the reality is, is that where truth transforms you is in the realm of your thinking in your soul where truth transforms your body or uh, impacts your body is in the realm of your thinking so i always just sum it up by saying this what you believe to be true becomes truth to you right That's the good. father's love here's one the father's love does not get irritable even though human love does many times mm -hmm. now Faith, there's a couple of kinds of irritation. There's ones where we get irritated just playing with one another as as human beings. But there's also a time where people really get. I mean, I've been in supermarkets and, and Walmart and places, and I've seen parents get extremely irritated with their child. And they didn't try to hide it under the umbrella of their Christianity. They just blasted it right out and smacked their kid upside the head and, you know, say a few choice words. The reality is, is that. We do see a lot of things and I don't want to be the one that points my finger and judges them uh, at all. Well, and we shouldn't, you know, there's been a lot of talk on Facebook lately about judging. And there is a scripture in the Bible that says, you know, that it kind of leads people to believe that we have a right to judge. But why don't you explain the difference in actual judging and what that scripture means because I know you know what I'm talking about well Faye here's here again is another subject that we could talk about and that does need to be rightly divided for our students in the future uh, but the the reality is is that there is the, there is a uh, there is a biblical or a godly way to judge judgment doesn't become criticism it doesn't become condemnation but right. we we can judge things by I judge this is a truth and this is not the truth. So I receive this to myself or I don't receive that to myself. Okay, but, but Dr. Bell, if you don't receive that to yourself, what do you do with that? Well, I don't blast somebody else because I disagree with what they said. But here's the thing, Faye. There also is judging that we're not supposed to do. We're not supposed to judge one another in terms of criticize and put each other down. You know, the Bible teaches us uh, that we're supposed to come together. We're supposed to discuss things and we're supposed to find common ground. Do you okay. know? But wait a minute. Go ahead. Before go ahead. you go on, let's back up there. When we hear ministers on TV or we hear them on the radio or whatever, big time ministers, and we say, that's not right. 
You know, according to the way we've been taught, we say that's not right. They're not teaching that right. That's Satan. That's, you know, and they come all off and all over Facebook. They're saying how wrong those ministers are when the whole bottom line is they might be the one that just don't understand truth. Look, look, Faye, I, as you you know this, I don't really watch Christian television. OK, uh, but when I hear something that's wrong, I don't write them a letter and tell them how wrong they are. And you I don't get on Facebook them. and blast. Them I don't either. get if I'm not going to write them a letter and tell them I'm certainly not going to now turn to gossip and tell everybody else how wrong I think the person I want to tell you let's, something let's, that I want to tell you something that happened to me one time, Dr. Bill, and this person had gone to work. Um, for a big time ministry. And this person had some things in their life that just was totally not right. In fact, mm -hmm. had even been um, been sent to court and, and uh, judged by the court as guilty and had to go to prison over it. But they were working for this big time ministry. And I felt in my heart that the one that was over that ministry knew what they were. And I sat down and I wrote a letter all about that and said, how could you put them to work in your ministry and blah, 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 blah. And you know, the Lord made me tear that up and throw it away. Well, he nudged me too, and I obeyed. Right, and I did. Right. The next day it came out in the paper that that person was let go from that ministry because of things that they had found out. So evidently the head didn't know, like I thought. So I was wrong there. But at the same time, you know, if we just give Holy Spirit a chance, he can do the work. We don't have to do it for him. Sure, sure. You know, there was a guy on the television news one time that he was creating quite a following. Now, the guy's dead now, but he was creating quite a following for him. Millions of dollars coming into his so-called ministry. One of the requirements was is to believe that he was the physical reincarnation of Christ. And he had everybody tattoo the numbers 666 on them. Now, the world, the media, the church world judged that immediately and said uh, the guy is having them stamp the number of Satan on them. But did you know the number six or six, six, six are not the numbers of Satan. The number six, 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 six is the number of man. And did you know that Nero was the sixth leader, according to Revelation 17, that uh, had fallen? And there was still another one who was to come, which was Gabula or uh, Galba, rather. And, you know, sometimes what we do is we take natural things because we've been taught goofiness. And I, I use that word you know, very, very strongly goofiness. And we say things, but Faye, do you know what it means? Judge not, you know, Matthew 7, 7, judge not lest you be judged. You, the words judge not actually the short definition. Uh, one of the things is to decide or to think good. So I do, when I judge something, it doesn't mean I judge you turned around by condemn you turned around by gossip about you it means i decide not to go that direction yeah why is that so complicated it shouldn't be no it shouldn't be complicated at all but okay. people want to they want to prove that they're right and these other preachers are wrong for instance something that i have talked about online so it's nothing new and that is christmas trees I don't set a Christmas tree up in my living room and get down in front of it and bow and say, oh, thou most highly beautiful Christmas tree. I don't worship that tree. I have a tree in my house just simply for decoration. And that's it to put my gifts under. And I love it. I love Christmas time. I love decorating my whole house at Christmas time. So. For somebody to come off and say that, you know, just because it was back in Jeremiah that they pulled a tree down and they adorned it, that makes it wrong for us to do it. Well, first of all, those people are still living back under the law and I, I'm not living under the law. Right. And second of all, most of the time that will come, people will come down on such things. If you look at their life, they've got something a whole lot bigger than that in their life. That's right. Uh, I love Dr. John Roberts. He he made a really good post. I, I, I don't want to read the whole thing, but uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful post. And it ends with judge not is make good decisions. Um, the, the truth is. So. So here's what I, we, I want. A couple more scriptures I want to read today Faye, before we close. It's it's a, a, almost an hour. But one of the things I'd like to say is, is can you see why teaching 
a full course on the love of God or on the different kinds of of of, of uh, love uh, is necessary because mm -hmm. so many people sure. when you talk about love you're also going to talk about condemnation you're going to talk about conviction or convincing you're going to talk about judging all of those things fit into this package so there needs to be a full program laid out to teaching people first of all how to walk in and yield to the agape unconditional love of the father that's in us well and dr bill before they can do that you know when somebody's not even saved or first saved what's the, what's the kind of love that they usually think about most eros what can I get for me? You know, even when they become a Christian, what kind of teaching can I get that's going to help me make my ministry better? What can I do for my ministry? You know, that's talking only about yourself. And that's not the kind of love that God wants us to have. So, yes, yeah. we need a training on what those types of loves are and what kind of love we should be showing and how we can show that love. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, they, uh, we, we want to at least catch these next two scriptures. Uh, first, uh, first Corinthians 13, 13, and I posted in the Message Bible. Would you care to read that? Okay, tell me again which one it was. First Corinthians 13, 3 in okay, the Message I Bible. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't have love, I've gotten nowhere. So this verse precedes the ones we started with today. And here's the thing. God's love is never happy about any injustice that happens to someone. Faye, have you ever known in your lifetime when someone uh, said they got what they had coming to them? Well, that's said all the time. You know, I mean, there's people that really feel that way. Um, it can be something as little as... Oh, I don't even know what, you well, know, a, but they get, well, yeah, that or, or even in school, you know, a student does something wrong. And so they'll get put on three days probation. Then they think that they shouldn't get that because mm -hmm. what they did wasn't so bad. But there's mm -hmm. students that think, well, they got just exactly what they deserve. Now we have to be able to, in our school, we have to be able to, Give them correction, but giving it give it in a loving way, not in a, a condemning way. But Faye, isn't it wonderful that when we came, when Christ went to the cross, that we didn't get what we deserved, but He got what we deserved. He got it, and I hate that He even had to go through it, but He took it. He wanted to. Mm -hmm. He did it for joy. The Bible says, and He did it because Father God loved us that much, and, and He was he, able to bear it, and we weren't. Yes, exactly. So people should stop trying to bear it. They should stop trying to to keep that sickness on their body or or you know all of those things and just give it lay it down. This is where we have a really a mixture of law and grace in Christianity today, Faye, and that is believing that my body is sick and I can't seem to get well and it must be that I'm getting what I deserved. That that's really God for me is um, yeah, but that's not true. But the way we see each other and what we deserve is totally different from the way God sees us and what we deserve because that scripture, there's none that's any better than that is uh, we are the righteousness of God mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's how God sees us. He sees us through his son. And if he sees us that way, isn't that how we should see each other? And isn't that how we should see ourselves? Yeah, absolutely. And folks, here, here's the bottom line. God, his love never gives up on you. It never loses faith in you. It is always hopeful of your success. And his love endures through every circumstance you face. <laughs> so. Dr. Dr. John Roberts said, uh, or we might say, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy or gal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've heard those kind of comments before. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to go ahead and give, if you would like to um, 
to donate to the college, how you can give, and that there's two ways. You can go to www.gofundme.com forward slash WBS University. And Dr. Bill, if you would just put that in the um, chat room. And then Absolutely. also, if you want to um, give by direct mail, you can give at WBSITC, which means World Bible School International Training Center. And that's at P.O. Box 397, Rolla, Missouri, 65402. And if you have a larger gift, well, we don't care if you want to send everything to the uh, P.O. Box, excuse me, because they don't take um, they don't take charges out like the GoFundMe does, although it's not a a lot for small donations, but if it's a larger donation, then they would take more. Right. So if you want to send it to the PO box, I would say that's the best way. Sure. And, uh, you know, we don't care how it comes. If you send it by the PO box, uh, please understand our urgency in educating the nations. Just send us a text message or a, a Facebook message and let us know that that's what you're doing. And um, so we you can know, watch for it too. Absolutely. Uh, we do not want anything to get lost in the mail. We're talking about kingdom funds. Amen. Now, uh, let me just let's read one last scripture, Faye, uh, okay. because I think it's important for people to know that God will never stop loving you, including everyone else in this world. He loves everyone. First John four, verse seven and eight. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God for God is love. It doesn't mean God doesn't know them, that God doesn't love them. It just means they don't know God's love. They haven't encountered, Brother Jimmy talks about having an encounter with God. They haven't had that encounter to know how much Father God loves them. That's right, Faye. And this last part of the verse, verse eight, he who does not love does not know God for God is right. love. What it's saying to us, you, you've said it, and what that says to us is that uh, the reality is, is they have not come into an awareness of the Father's love. It doesn't mean they're bad. It doesn't mean God kicked them out. It just means that they have not become aware of the Father's love. So this is who God is, and this is how you can know God. God is love. Exactly. So this is just another taste of a subject that we will teach. Uh, it might be one of the basics, but one of the things that we'll teach at World Bible School University, if it's not one of our immediate lessons, I know that it will certainly be interjected because it is absolutely a necessary subject for us to get to know more about how God feels about us. And if you don't know how God feels about you, I can tell you one of the things you will do is you will live a miserable life. Amen. And that's the way a lot of people do live. They live in fear. They live in um, thinking that, oh, if I do something this bad, then God, yeah. Father God hates me, even though it might be something, a little thing, or they might have said something to a friend that was cross. And now they're feeling guilty for it and feel like Father God can't love them because they opened their mouth. Well, that's not true. Father God loves you, period. You just need yeah. to well, what a lot of people call repent means to change your mind, turn around and just do it right. You know, right now, one final thing I'd just like to say, we didn't re re rehearse this or anything, but I'd like to say that Faye and I pretty much operate our ministry from home at this time. Uh, we preach and we minister at Living Waters Fellowship out of town uh, where Dr. Jimmy Lewis is the senior uh, leader there. Um, we're, we don't have assistants, uh, seniors and assistants and all that. We're all apostles there. But, uh, but here locally, we minister out of our home. We have a home Bible study here. We have our offices here. Faye does Faith Unlimited e-magazine. She does it for free every month. She has a publishing company. She's really working hard at trying to get off the ground. It just hasn't hit that niche yet. Uh, we do all of our World Bible School free classes here, college level material, I believe. And and uh, we don't get paid for what we do. And so we don't have the money to go out and build this university. So that's why we ask for your help. Uh, we have never taken time to have a whole broadcast about pressuring you and telling you how that you ought to give. And if no. you don't give, you're not blessed to the Lord. That's no. so ridiculous. We would right. never do that. But what we are saying to you is, you can go to our, our, our send up, uh, uh, a donation to our P.O. box or to GoFundMe. And um, 
you can help be a blessing to this university. Right. And I will go as far as to say, listen to God. If God puts it on your heart and speaks, don't not listen to him. Do what he says, because that's just a good thing to do. You know, listening to God is always a good thing to do. Amen. Well, we hope you've gained some valuable information today from what we've shared. Uh, We want to invite you to catch the vision, make a donation, help us build this university for Jesus. It's not for us. Uh, Future generations will, uh, uh, we plan to be around forever, but uh, who knows? One of these days, we might have to slow down just a little bit and there'll be other people nah. who will be able to help us out. And thank you for those who have donated and are donating. Absolutely. We appreciate it very much. Absolutely. Well, Faye, is there anything else? I think that's all for this week, Dr. Bill. Okay. So we hope that your questions have been answered to uh, whatever degree we've been able to. Uh, We hope that uh, you've enjoyed the broadcast. Please always interact with us with questions and comments, and we'll do the best we can either on this show or the next to do what we can to make sure that what you have to say is addressed. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget uh, uh, Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Take another look. We're in Revelation chapter uh, nine toward the end. Um, And then all of our other broadcasts this week, uh, a really special show that's becoming to be special and and known is Friday Morning Conversations with Dr. Bill. It's one of those shows where you can communicate, <laughs> write in, ask questions. We can talk. And and I have even room to have uh, visitors on. I had Dr. Jimmy Lewis on last week and maybe on again this week. So just a lot of things going on this week on Kingdom Dynamics on Thursday evening, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Dr. Glenn Hartline will be with me and we'll be sharing something that will be of value to you. The gifts of the spirit always go crazy when Dr. Glenn and I are together. And it's just one of those things. God bless you. Uh, and uh, from Faye and I. Yes, Faye. No, that's all. Okay, from Faye and I, thank you. We love you. We love you, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye, everyone.